Hey guys, it's Kat, and before I get into this video, I wanted to tell you guys about my store. I've always got new things. I've got t-shirts, I've got mugs, tote bags, iPhone cases, and so much more. I worked really hard to put this stuff together for you guys, so check it out. Alright, so let's get on to the video. Hey guys, it's Kat, and I'm here today to talk to you guys about blackface. In light of recent controversies, the YouTube community has taken to calling out problematic YouTubers, which I'm a huge fan of because I've seen a lot of very large YouTubers profit from the perpetuation of sexism, racism, and transphobia. Now let me start by saying this. I don't blame anybody for not necessarily knowing the history or the full implications of blackface. We grew up in a country that taught us the whitewashed version of history. The atrocities and the true extent of racism in this country has been downplayed and in some cases completely written out of history books. Blackface is not something that only manifested in small southern back alley stages. It's something that was and is still currently international. It appeared on television, it appeared on Broadway, it appeared on the silver screen, and it has a long history in music. It's a part of our culture that a lot of people want to ignore, but I believe that we have to talk about it because it is something that does still impact Black people today. Blackface is something that was so popular that huge animation companies produced children's cartoons that starred black-faced characters. In this video, we'll be focusing on Warner Brothers' Snow White parody, Cole Black and the Seven Dwarves. Bob Clampett's Cole Black and the Seven Dwarves is one of 11 Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies films that were censored in 1968 called The Censored Eleven. I'll be using the characters in this film to frame some of the racist archetypes that are commonly found in blackface productions. First, we have the Evil Queen. The Evil Queen portrays one of the most popular blackface stock characters, the Mammy. The Mammy archetype is morbidly obese and often portrayed with having very large breasts. Now, despite having these large breasts, she is viewed as being sexually undesirable and in fact is regarded as quite masculine in her demeanor. The Mammy is illiterate, loud, and she's violent towards her own children, yet warm and welcoming to the white children that she's been made to wet nurse. The Mammy will bake a plate of warm pancakes for white soldiers, but feed her children scraps. Then we've got So White, who is referred to in the title as Cole Black. She is the Jezebel. The Jezebel is hypersexualized. She's seen as the polar opposite of a proper white woman. She exemplifies the idea that black women are sexually available more so than white women. She is portrayed as immoral, ditzy, and willing to accept and appreciate any sex that comes her way, be it by force or by her own will. So white is lusted by every male character in this film yet she never quite settles for one. Then we have Prince Charming, who in this film is called Prince Shaman. Prince Shaman is the Zip Coon. The Zip Coon adorns himself with proper clothing and is arrogant in his demeanor. Now, despite dressing like a wealthy man, his lack of intellect undermines him. He is portrayed as essentially a man who's putting on airs, not quite being able to maintain an air of high class. He is seen and treated as though he is an animal in man's clothing. Finally, we have the seven dwarves. They are the Sambo. The Sambo are pickaninnies, unkempt black children, usually depicted as having knotted hair with large lips that can often be seen gulping watermelon. Sambos are often depicted as foolishly placing themselves into dangerous situations. Most popularly, they're seen hanging from trees as tigers roar at them from below. They're also popularly seen near swamps, near alligators, and are affectionately referred to as alligator babes. This is only scraping the surface of blackface characterizations overall. At the time that this film was produced, it was actually considered to be very progressive because it included black voice actors and musicians. 
You can watch the entire film in the link that I put in the description box below. So why is blackface harmful? Blackface is harmful because these characters and these stereotypes were created by white people with the express purpose of defining and dehumanizing black people. Blackface is to African Americans as traditional Shakespearean theater was to women. Black performers and white performers were not allowed to share the same stage. This means that whenever there was a black character in a production, a black actor was not casted. Instead, they opted to cast a white actor in blackface. And these black characters were never meant to be portrayed as sympathetic characters. They were always either comedic relief or villains. The archetypes I described were reproduced and perpetuated to the point where when black actors were actually allowed to portray themselves in film and television and theater, they very rarely veered away from these stereotypical stock characters. Hannah McDaniel was the first black woman to win an Oscar for her role in Gone with the Wind in 1940. What was her role? Well, she was literally named Mammy in the film. Hattie was a phenomenal actress, but almost all of her roles were exclusively that of the Mammy archetype. So what happens when a white comedian dons dark makeup in order to portray a black character for laughs? It conjures and perpetuates a history of white actors darkening their skin in order to dehumanize black people. Blackface has been used to make arguments for slavery and why African Americans should not be given full human rights. These are narratives that were created by white men to oppress and dehumanize an entire race of people. So when white men are still perpetuating these tropes in 2014, it's really not gonna sit well with certain members of the black community. I know what you're asking. What about white face? You literally can't compare white face to black face. Why? Because white face has never limited the options of white actors nor did whiteface seek to speak for white people in a world where they are underrepresented. Whiteface is criticism, while blackface is degradation. When Dave Chappelle dons light makeup and does the hip hop news break, he's making a commentary on race and class. He's parroting racist white men who will passively make racist comments, but don't want to be seen as racist. When the Wayans brothers went undercover as two white blonde twin sisters, it is again a commentary on race and class. Half of the jokes in this film depend on the idea that these two black men are from lower income and class, and they're trying to maintain the persona of rich upper class white women, and they often fail. What needs to be understood is that this is not a two wrongs don't make a right scenario because black people and white people are still not equal in this society. And no, equality does not come when we have just one black president out of 44 presidents since this country has been established not even 250 years ago. Blackface demonstrably has been used to dehumanize black people and has subsequently led to the perpetuation of institutionalized racism. So my question to you is, what are the repercussions of whiteface? What rights were denied to you because Chappelle decided to wear whiteface on television and the Waynes brothers decided to wear whiteface on the silver screen? There's a reason why black people object to blackface. It's not just the makeup. It's the history of oppression and dehumanization and racism that comes with it. When your only exposure to black narratives are white men in dark makeup, your understanding of black people, let alone the racism that black people face, is going to be very distorted. So in this conversation, please understand that white people do not get to decide what is and isn't offensive to people of color. At the end of the day, as a black woman, I will have to live with the stereotypes that I described in this video. So you can of course have an opinion about blackface, but honestly, if you don't live with it, then realize that that's a privilege and that the opinions of people who live with racism are always going to give you a better understanding of the issue at hand. Honestly, I hate being that angry black girl.
I want to, I want to feel like I'm overreacting. I would love to live in a world where these things weren't issues and I was just making a big deal out of nothing. But I feel like conversations like this need to happen, especially in light of current YouTube events. Um, I really do feel like people need to understand what blackface is, where it comes from, and why it's offensive to so many black people. We have to accept that there are certain things that we've been socialized and conditioned to accept as okay that aren't okay. And we have to make conscious decisions to call these things out, acknowledge them, and then move forward and do better. And on that note, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I really do appreciate you watching the entire thing. Um, this video only brushes the surface of what blackface is. So I'm going to include some um, links in the description bar for anybody who's interested in really, you know, getting into, you know, the deep history of blackface. Um, and yeah, I'd appreciate if people were to share this video because I, you know, put a lot of effort into it and, you know, it would really, the help, the, the, you know, I'd appreciate the support. <laughs> um, anyway, on that note, regardless of what race you are, always remember and never forget that you are beautiful and you are loved. Bye.